Hello fellow wargamers and warship enthusiasts. This is Gamer1745 with a look at the USS North Dakota as it's done in War Thunder and we're going to be well starting out looking at its history then into the details of the ship in War Thunder as the game interprets the vessel and then finally we're going to go play a mission uh, sea battle with the North Dakota um, so if you want to jump forward to those um, segments you can do so but let's start out with the USS North Dakota um, she was the second of the um, two in a class um, uh, class of uh, Del of the Delaware class vessels so the obviously the sister ship is the Delaware just um, in the United States they name um, battleships after states. Cruisers are named after cities as the, the rule. So um, that's why so we currently have up to 50 battleships, though we don't have any um, currently. So yes, this is a battleship. This is um, the only one currently in the American lineup for battleships, and I would say probably. Let's look, I haven't really played the. Yeah, I'd say probably the best battleship in the game, though the Helga Land is maybe a very close second. But let's look a little bit at her history. She was laid down in December 1907 and commissioned in April 1910. So, you know, not quite full three years of production time to produce. Now, she is very much the American response uh, to the British HMS Dreadnought. They were already working on you know, developing the concept at the time when, when um, Dreadnought was built and sort of rush built. Uh, and so this was, um, you know, the U.S. trying to match and to be able to handle this new coming of um, vessels here. Now, so, yeah, so she's commissioned in um, 1910 and decommissioned in 1923. After World War One, she had a peaceful career. Um, she was, I believe, like in the Chesapeake um, Bay Area when the U.S. declared war. I believe stayed entirely on the U.S. East Coast during World War One. Not that there was much need to send battleships to Europe. Now there was a considerable need to escort uh, convoys to Europe. Uh, from submarines, so those vessels got a lot more use. And it just, because of the Washington Naval Treaty, they wanted to reduce the numbers of vessels, so it was decommissioned then, and um, eventually broken up in 1931 for scrap. So that's the, the history. There really isn't much there. So let's take a look at this. Why? Do I think this is, I really quite, I don't, I didn't get the loan of it, and I didn't, oh, I don't know if I, maybe, we can quick, just do a quick preview here. Yes, we can run off the preview. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, they are four 12-inch gun turrets. Yeah. Now, I'm going with, I, I think... The North Dakota is the best top level, uh, top tier U.S. ship, primarily because all of its turrets are center lined. So it has five turrets, two gun, two gun turrets, and so it can, unlike say um, the Helgoland, um, where two turrets, at a minimum two turrets cannot be um, targeting the same vessel since you don't have independent targeting of main gun batteries yet not quite as good so this we can um, get all 10 of 
the main guns on the broadside and they're 12 inch 45 caliber so they're reasonably long guns they have 14 um, 5 inch guns and casemate around the vessel to help keep away um, smaller ships and what two three inch those set up as some sort of yeah some sort of maybe half-ass anti-aircraft gun or also higher mounted um you know maybe shoot down a bit more um anti like motor torpedo boat type small small um thing so this like all of these vessels um current top tier battleships are extremely vulnerable to any air attacks but as we can let's click over here at our russian um, light cruiser here we can see the armor and this is i want to illustrate here you got 100 millimeters thickness you got 130 65 on the front plate 175 it's armor power 130 30 millimeters so 10 so yeah now this is a light cruiser but we can see that with its 152 millimeter guns come over here we've got 279 254 127 um, 245 plus massive coal bunkers here I think generally speaking the Helgeland's uh, armor is better than this because I've been playing this and the Helgeland mostly um, in top tier but um, I do think this is a better, better vessel it does have the sort of early um, idea of having torpedoes in it, which, again, if you're not familiar or haven't watched some of the other videos, do. I have looked at the other top tier vessels um, here. Uh, so you should subscribe to the channel. Check them out. These torpedoes here, um, I would say, are basically useless. I mean, yeah, you can get lucky and something may hit. Um, in War Thunder. I would say mostly useless in real life. Now they were designed is that if you're all you know, have a line of battleships because the proper term is line of battle ships separated out and that they would operate in a in a column of vessels all lined up like this firing broadsides over at whoever's over there um, that was the idea, and to be able to control these vessels for your um, fleet commander, you would um, radios were definitely becoming a thing. Were were a thing by this time, and uh, especially in 19 whatever, they are mostly um, we're talking Morris code type radios. But aerials get shot away. Electricity may not be working. Things aren't. It's not considered something they're going to rely upon and especially navies militaries in general are um they're tradition bound because the traditions there are known to work so the main communication method are flags um either flags that are hoisted up here that would spell out or have a code you know a series of numbers that someone would look up and see what they was or potentially a guy you know standing on the back here or someplace you know to communicating by waving his arms with with little semaphore flags spelling out you know prepare to turn to you know the right or whatever you know port or starboard of course they would be using and so in battle they are not too near each other can't really zoom back out further but um operating in line of battle well if you and a few of your other vessels do a, do some of the math and figure out where they sort of are and angle yourselves right, pump out some torpedoes, yeah, you're not necessarily trying to hit a particular ship. You're just trying to put some torpedoes into the enemy's line of battle. Now, we will see how things go when we do play the mission, but I rarely, rarely die currently to 
um, other battleships in the game with these. Now, this would match the historical um, premise in that we're battling currently against things like the Helgeland um, Dreadnought. And so these are similar era vessels. So what it was designed to face, they just batter each other heavily without normally sinking in the terms of a War Thunder match. So yeah, you're not normally going to sink from, from engaging other enemy heavy cruisers, battleships, normally. I'm not saying you won't, but normally you won't. What I've been sinking to have been air attacks and torpedo attacks. And they knew this back then. And so if you notice all of these torpedoes and these other vessels as well, you see they're below the armor. So they're down in the hull, well below the water level. You didn't you didn't weaken the armor by um, putting a hole in the armor to release it. It's just in part of the, the hull. The hull is in the hull. <laughs> and so it's set up there um, pretty low down, hard to hit from... Um, you know, enemy gunfire because it's well below the water level. And if you hit, you can do devastating, particularly hit in the right spot, do devastating damage to the enemy vessel because as we can see here, so this has both coal bunker and fuel. Interesting, it has a fuel tank. So probably to run electrical power? Hmm? Because these, I believe, are turbine engines. Um, let me see. Let me check that on Wikipedia. Got it open right here. Um, yep, steam turbine. Um, which should be coal, though. Later vessels, World War II era, are oil-burning steam turbines. Maybe these could burn both? I don't know. Seems awfully big fuel tank. Or an auxiliary... Um, Type. So you can see, compared to any of these other vessels, even if you're talking about another vessel with fairly big um, guns on them, battle cruisers particularly come into that sort of class that um, have, if not quite battleship-grade guns, nearly battleship-grade guns, but with light cruiser-type armor. So they're really fast and not with battleship armor so they can they can engage um overwhelmingly engage the, the design concept of a battle cruiser is overwhelmingly engage anything that isn't a battleship with firepower and be able to effectively run away from any battleships so they just oh there's battleships coming we're out of here and um they just head out and get away from being devastated by something here, so these are armored enough to stand in your line of battle. Now, Jackie Fisher, who was the person who really, I mean, these were already in the works, but Jackie Fisher really sees the future that with the, and I talk about it in the Dreadnought video in more detail, that with the new gunnery abilities, both in the designs of the ships and designs of, this is where you would aim the, the main guns from forward, is there an aft? Well, I guess on top of this turret is where they have. That is your main sighting um, device there. And so they're to send electronically to the different turrets how to point your guns after running it through a mechanical um, or a simplistic electronical um, computer, basically. Uh, you know, It's not like a computer that we use today, obviously, but it's it can only do one thing is is you put in a series of numbers and it spits out a solution to be able to target them with the proper guns. It's, you know, a ballistic computer. So whether it's electronical or mechanical, I'm not sure on these. And these did get updated over the years, um, you know, gunnery computers. So where these other guns here are thought to be needed and they continue to be needed um, to get into turrets eventually instead of casemates or open on the deck are to deal with the smaller targets because if you have and we may see this in um, the mission we play if you have destroyers out there that can kill you readily with your um with their with their um, torpedoes you may not be able to fire your, your main guns at them because of reloading speed and or because there may be just too many of those or a desire to target other enemy main combatants 
that you want to you need to rely upon these smaller um, five inch guns to deal with the destroyers, light cruisers, motor torpedo boats that are running around the battlefield. So you have these other um, guns. The rear ones, not so much as we can see here, but these in the main housing are well armored. You know, armored to what a light cruiser's main armor would be. And so if you're talking about Potentially depends on the type of ammo, of course, and whatnot, but potentially here firing um, destroyers at them or other light pop guns on a light cruiser. Yeah, they're not going to do the, the real dam or do any real damage to them. Uh, you need to have a, you know, um, main guns hit them from fairly heavy stuff to do your damage. So this has 47. So this is going reasonably quick for some of these this era. A lot of them are around in like 45 knots. Um, don't know what else to say again. Very vulnerable from the air and torpedoes. Not that worried about surface battles. So let's let's give this a, a go in surface actions. So as I was saying about the torpedoes, the way things work out in War Thunder, they're basically useless. I'm not saying I'm not saying if you sort of kind of at the right angle not to spam the torpedoes out, but don't try to really maneuver your vessel to fire the torpedoes in War Thunder. They're just not going to be um, anything effective, likely. Um, do sort of the dance with the enemy vessels because we are talking effectively independent ship actions we're not talking line of battle actions now i someday when i get some friends who have um some heavy vessels because right now only two of us do um i will want to try to form lines of battle and um see how well that works against all these independent the operated vessels so the so unlike the line of battle, you have good maneuvering choices so that you can get, you know, with the enemy forward of you um, to some degree to become a smaller target and then turn open fire your broadside because some of these take quite a while to reload and then to some degree um, turn back, beef, you know, off of it and then turn back on this does two things one minimizes the ability to be hit because the enemy has to fire at longer ranges where you're going to be not where you are because you're moving they're moving you need to fire where you're going to be or where you need to fire where the enemy is going to be not where they're at so if you're estimating yes yeah, so if you go along in a steady course they'll better figure that that out and hit you the other thing is of course is to make predictions good we're going to go in for enemy torpedo targeting that um trying to hit there i know there's probably going to be a whole mess of people but let's come in on this side now we only have armor piercing which is a bit of a weakness in this uh, a bunch of the other um Uh, vessels have um, more high explosive rounds which you would mostly not so much against maybe this heavy cruiser but mostly prefer to use okay we're going to fire to make a range of shot while the other two turrets are moving into position um, we're going to wait to give a full broadside let's see how we're doing follow oh stop Oh, I missed watching that. Okay, we're a little behind. I don't really want them really trying to fire at this kind of range. Okay. I think we were a bit behind, though. I was paying attention to my keystrokes too much at the time. Is that these rounds here are normally fused 
that need to hit something solid before they explode. Okay, looks like on target for um, leading the vessel, but um, they're closing, so I overshot that, look like. And they're going to be moving a little bit faster than I am. Well, the heavy cruisers are World War Two vessels instead of World War One. Yeah, plug the holes. Okay, still going long. He's closing range with me, so... Looks like he's moving, but no. I know I have not been doing any dodging and wheeling here. Which means I get hit, but okay. Okay, let's... Let's fire down like that. Splashes are. Ooh, there we go. See, got that right. Now that was a battleship going in heavy cruiser. You notice a lot of black areas on that ship. I'm actually slightly more worried about that little guy. Than, uh, well, I'm definitely more worried about that guy than I am worried about this heavy cruiser here. Hey. Oh, damn. Should have paused a little bit longer. Okay. And hit a few times there, and, and still got 83% of my crew. Don't know where that motor torpedo boat's going. It looks like it's just climbing into the island there. Move back a bit, swing over. Thank you, other vessels. Then again, I'm the battleship, so I go where I want. Okay, they're going super slow. There we go. Boom, gone. Okay. Sort of changing. Yeah, okay. You, you should be fast enough. Get away from me. You're attracting too much fire at me. Go away. Go away. No, no, no. Don't drive me that way. God damn it. back. So you're you're like sinking badly. Who am I pushing you under? I don't know which. Oh damn it. Yeah, is yeah, you just get away from me, damn it. See what happens when these guys come way too close here. Good volley, there we go. Okay, forward now again. Got away from this damn guy. Oh, they're shooting the pot properly. Is there many fuse or time fuse up near me? Well, most of them. I've still got 75% of my crew left. Come on, I don't want to be a sitting duck here. God damn. Yeah, you really don't want to be in a tight group. See, when I talked about line of battleships, that's part of the reason, because they would space out from each other, keep good spacings. And you wouldn't be, you know, overshooting or undershooting, you wouldn't be hitting somebody else. And normally the spacings would be big enough that if you weren't leading or trailing or whatever, the enemy vessel well enough, they wouldn't you know, 
hit the guy in front or behind you either. Ooh, pretty good hits, pretty good hits. Still 75% crew left. If I had a high explosive ammunition with some of these hits, I think I would have done much. That looks like a Brooklyn class. Good ship if it is. Oh, he's turning. He's trying to turn from mine coming around. It's probably. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, well, missed him. So he did good there. Since we still have the range on him, okay, he's trying to come closer. Right, low and slightly in front of him. Wow, nice tire looking. Let's go after this other guy back here. No, he's too far away. Couldn't have retargeted. Got to do ranging all over this guy. Yeah, we're taking on water, but we're hopefully plugging it fast enough before we sink. He's mostly stopped. Yeah in a very bad way so let's see if one good volley at this range will take him out maybe I should have trailed him a bit more nope he isn't too much of a Okay, that was some good hit. And did we get taken? Yeah, we got took taken out by an aircraft. Like I say, the aircraft is the deadliest thing to this vessel. Where if you can come in and we will do this. I will also be making a video on the New Orleans. So if you haven't got that. Now this one, I'm going to right now go immediately to full anti-aircraft. Okay, so we're almost so... Well, what am I going to be targeting? Um, well, we'll probably stick with this ammunition because we are talking at least by light cruisers. down well you can see on this vessel the plethora and it is a plethora of anti-aircraft guns of various calibers you got the five inch guns on the sides here and those are five inches five inch guns was it four per side here that are already engaging they will have proximity fuses probably with this game definitely timed fuses and so they're engaging, you know, way out there, but probably not terribly effectively. The aircraft that killed me. And you can see the much increased maneuverability of a vessel like this. 
But if that aircraft gets close enough, well, we're already starting to see some 40 millimeter cannons engaging. Oh, we're in it. We're going over the bridge. Yeah, so you see the shallow. It's very shallow here. And then get in closer, you'll get a hail of 20 millimeter rounds as well. They don't waste all the rounds at, at long range, which would be best if they probably weren't. Okay. Now you just have to pay attention if an aircraft is getting close enough. Back to full anti aircraft. Is he anywhere nearby or did he get shot down? Oh, he got shot down. Okay, so he's shot down. Well, let's switch over to this cruiser here. Put a nice broadside in on him. Fully. Ah, I should have traveled it more. Reality, just a fragment came off there. There we go. We got some hits, but high explosive might have been better. We'll go over to that next volley. on target. Oh, well, mostly splash damage, but... Oh, there we go. There's some hits. with the smaller guns than the North Dakota have much higher rate of fire. Oh, there we go. That was a good hit. Now, since I'm using high explosives, I didn't seem to get into its turret at all. I was hoping just to light the thing on fire massively. Oh, he's getting right. Oh, he got killed. Is he shooting an aircraft? Yep. Yeah. He was worried about aircraft. That light cruiser, no light cruiser, but the close one we have. There we go. Maybe we'll go back after this wrap, after this volley. You can see how much quicker we're losing crew here with this vessel. Unless I'm targeting a heavy cruiser, I don't want to use the armor-piercing ammunition. There we go. We 
but this might have been better over at our ammo. We're pretty hard. Let's see if I can get its forward section a bit more. As we shoot over midway, the island. Okay. Not as far forward as I want, and yes, die, it died to aircraft. Okay, what do I. Ooh, hello, little boat here. Okay, he's firing at surface targets, which is useful, not torpedoing me at the moment. Obliterated, obliterated. Okay, let's... We're on fire, we still have 41% of our crew left. Okay. Load, 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 put out fires, load, 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 repair, repair, put out fires, fire, go back to high explosives. There we go, I should have had on anti-aircraft duty. Damn, I was too worried about that little motor torpedo boat and I should have moved it back after I killed it. Well, that'll be the end of our battle here. So we came here really to look at the North Dakota in action. Well, I thought the New Orleans might be an interesting contrast. And yeah, like I said, it could have done much better um, switching back to anti-aircraft um, batteries or engagements with the, with the, with the AA batteries. Um, but yeah, this is my look at the USS North Dakota BB-29. Um, yep, I, I think it is one of, one of the best, if not the best, top-tier naval vessel currently in War Thunder. Love to hear your opinions on that below. See you next time for more historical gaming.